So here's some improvement on a method to measure the specific heat capacity of a material. This time I'm going to measure the specific heat capacity of this block of aluminium. This is one kilogram of aluminium. And this block of steel, so that's just iron essentially, steel. Uh, and this block of, this is copper. Instead of using our kettle to roughly calculate the energy supply to water as we did last time, we're going to use an immersion heater to actually accurately measure the energy supplied to th these three metal blocks. This whole setup would work just as well if I was to use water, but instead of doing the specific heat press of water here, we're going to do these three metals. What I have now is a ammeter measuring the current through the heater. I've got a voltmeter measuring the potential difference across the heater. And I have a power pack supplying 12 volts DC to the heater. Now I'm going to leave it just a little while just to get hot. Once the heater is hot enough to be supplying a constant rate of heating to the metal. I'm also going to use just a little bit of oil in the hole there where the thermometer goes and the thermometer then is not going to be reading the temperature of the air or a little vacuum as gets created inside there and give you an inaccurate reading of the temperature. That's quite an important one for getting the accuracy correct for your measurement of temperature. So I'm going to allow it just to get started, allow it to get up to kind of operating temperature and then I'm going to start taking readings and I'm going to take readings of V and I, so that's potential difference and current and time every 30 seconds and I'm going to read off the temperature every 30 seconds and I'm going to keep those results in a results table and then analyze them later. So the simple circuit setup, we've got the power pack, the block with the heater in it, ammeter in series, voltmeter in parallel and turn it on. We're taking readings of current and potential difference every 30 seconds and we're also reading off the temperature using our thermometer. When I take a reading of temperature, what I should be doing is getting down to eye level with the scale so that I can read it accurately. That makes sure that I don't get what's called a parallax error. I need to be my eyes at 90 degrees to the scale so it doesn't look a little bit too big or a little bit too small. It's really important when you're describing a method that you describe what you're measuring and what you're measuring it with and how you're gonna do it accurately. So once I'm finished, I'm just gonna replace that block with my copper and then with my aluminium block they're all one kilogram and I'm going to take readings for five minutes for each of those. And then we're just going to go into the computer and I'll show you the graphs. So to analyze this, we need to know about energy analysis. We're essentially saying that one store is emptying and that store is the electrostatic store. And that's given by VIT. So electrical power is potential difference times current and energy is power times time. So VIT gives us the electrical energy. So that is the store there, that is VIT, the electrostatic store of energy. And that's decreasing, and that's being transferred into our thermal store, which is increasing, of the liquid or of the metal. The thermal store is this equation here, the energy transferred in heating, the change in thermal energy. So that is MC delta T, mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. So what we're essentially saying is that this is the case down here. We're using our energy analysis to derive an expression which has everything that we're measuring and the thing that we want to work out, the final result of the experiment, if you like, which is this C, specific heat capacity. This is the principle of energy analysis and you're using this to work out the specific heat capacity. So here's an example for a set of results for a quarter of a kilogram of water. You can see this person's recorded the potential difference here, the currents here and the times, they've recorded those results every 30 seconds using the stopwatch. And to work out this column, they've just used energy is VIT, potential difference times current times time. So essentially this times this times this has given them the values or will give them the values in this column here. And they've recorded the temperature every 30 seconds as well. Now, what they're going to do to analyze that is to actually plot a graph. And that's where it really starts to get interesting. So let's talk about plotting the graph. So how do those results translate onto a graph? So we have the idea that we're taking VIT, that's the electrical store, and we are making that equal to, we're transferring that into the thermal store, MC delta T. And we want to plot a graph such that we're gonna get a gradient equal to the specific heat capacity. Well, let's see what we plot where then. Let's just rearrange this for C. So I'm gonna leave VIT where it is, and I'm gonna divide both sides by M 
delta t. I get c equals v i t m delta t. So what am I going to plot on the y-axis? Well, I'm going to plot v i t, that is the electrical energy supplied. And what am I going to plot on the x-axis? That is the mass times temperature change. So now I have a situation where I have a gradient. And remember, always gradients equal rise over run. And our rise in this case is v i t. Our run is m delta t. And so our gradient is our specific heat capacity. When you run this practical, you almost always get a result which is above the stated and the true value of the specific heat capacity of the metals. And that is because you're not only supplying energy to the metal block, you're also supplying energy to heating the surroundings. So that's a systematic error, and that means that's one that we cannot remove from our experiment. We can make improvements though, we can actually insulate this block and that will mean that there's less energy transferred to the surroundings and we're going to get a more accurate value of our specific heat capacity. Right, that's been going, that's been going for a little while now, so I'm going to start it and I'm going to read off the starting temperature. I'm going to read off PD and current and then I am going to read off the temperature for each one of these and I'm going to keep those results in a results table and analyze them in the Excel sheet later. Let's have a look how the results turned out on the graphs. Here's all three of them, and we've calculated the energy here, we've calculated VIT here, for each of copper, steel, and aluminium. And I've also put in green here the true value. The value, if you look it up in a book or a set of tables, what is the value of the specific heat capacity of those metals? I've put those into the table there so we can make a comparison in a moment. Here they are then, here are the three graphs, and you can see here's the gradient here, so our measured value for copper, was 560 joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin. Steel, our measured value was 910 joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin. And aluminium was 990. So some of them were closer than others. Now, one really good way to evaluate a practical is to calculate this, a percentage difference. So I'm gonna do that now for each of these. A percentage difference is just how far away you were divided by the value, and that expresses the percentage. So how far away was I from the true value of copper? The difference, if you like, was 560 take away 390. 170 that's how far away i was from the value i was trying to measure and the actual true value was 390 so my percentage difference is going to be 170 the difference as a percentage of the true value divided by 390 times by 100 to turn it into a percent 44 percent difference that's pretty poor so i'm going to go ahead and work out the differences and then the percentage differences for each of the other two metals So interestingly, I was way closer with aluminium than I was with the steel or the copper. So now we can actually do some evaluation and we can start to think about what has gone wrong and how could we improve that. I did mention earlier in the video that certainly lagging, certainly insulation of the blocks would have made this better. But there's another key difference here. I used a thermometer and that means that I've got two readings above each other here and I've got two readings here that are the same. I've got, I've got temperatures which I can't really see the difference between. Now we don't really think that as we added the energy to the block that the temperature didn't change at all during that time. What is actually the case is my thermometer did not have a high enough resolution to show the difference between those. So one thing I could have used would be a temperature sensor or temperature probe with a data logger and then I can get to one decimal place so I can get for example 33.1 one reading and then 33.5 the next one maybe. That is called improving the resolution of the meter and it would make our uncertainty less and make us more sure about the results we've got. But actually I can say all of these seem to have a straight line of best fit. I'm happy that they will heat at the same rate but there's something else going on. Aluminium is a lot less dense than the block therefore had a lot larger volume so perhaps I could have done something made something different about the results. One other thing that I certainly could have done would be maybe to have extended the range of my independent variable. So what I could have done is I could have done this whole practical for a lot longer. So I could maybe have had readings every minute for 10 minutes rather than as I did have uh, readings every half minute for five minutes. But notice how they are all above the true value of specific heat capacity. And that is the main evaluative point to remember for this one, which is that you should 
use some kind of insulation to try and keep the energy within the block because what is actually really happening and this is an example of a systematic error which no amount of repeating will get you closer to the true value because it is always coming out as a bit too big we're always supplying a little bit more energy than we're actually measuring in the thermal store we're always saying that VIT is bigger than MC delta T. And that is because not all of the energy that we're supplying to the block is staying there in the block. Some of it is going to heating of the surroundings. It's getting dissipated to the surroundings. And that's a form of waste.